Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing a pen from Enso, as you can see here by the box. Uh, Enso is an American based company uh, who make what I think are super interesting uh, fountain pens and some ballpoint pens and all those sorts of things. But for me particularly, it is the fountain pens that I find particularly interesting. Um, not every model of their pens uh, has sort of uh, always been the best received or you know the most perfect but what they have always done is they've always strived to improve and make changes to develop the products and actually this pen is one of those so the pen today is the italia the italia is uh, a pen that is inspired by as they say the fountain pens of the golden age of the italian fountain pen and there are a couple of features on this pen that really uh, highlight that. Now, the Italia was a pen that was originally on Kickstarter. There's been a couple of different iterations of it. And this particular one, the titanium body, is a limited edition of 200 pens. Now, this pen was sent to me for review by Enso, and I am incredibly um, appreciative of that. Uh, and it is actually kind of awesome to be able to share this pen uh, with you. Now, over the years, I have had played with, reviewed, or, you know, sort of had in my possession hundreds of fountain pens. Like, at one point, my personal collection was almost 500. Uh, I've since culled it down. I have reviewed others, borrowed others, you name it. So it is unusual for me to actually be really excited about a pen. And when... And so said they would send out this one. I looked at it and thought, hey, this is a really cool pen. Looking forward to getting this. And then within about five minutes of having it, I was kind of giggling to myself. And there's a couple of reasons why, which I will get to. But let's talk about the pen. Let's talk about some of the features. Let's talk about, uh, you know, pros and cons, writing samples, specs, all that sort of stuff. Let's get going. Okay, so firstly, the packaging. It's really simple. It's one of the things that I like about Enso, they do not go over the top with the packaging because it is not the packaging that we get, we get the pen. So it's just a cardboard, you know, sleeve that sits around a box like that. The pen comes sitting in the foam and that's it. You don't need anything more than that, in my opinion. It's great. So that is how the pen comes packaged. That's all you need to know. It comes with a converter, no cartridge, but it comes with a converter, which is great. So, what are these features that show this pen to be, uh, you know, like inspired by uh, these Italian fountain pens of the golden age of the Italian fountain pen? Well, two main features for me. Firstly, these peaked finials on the pen. Now, these are features that are also uh, borrowed by brands like Leonardo. In fact, I think this pen holds a very similar uh, shape to the Leonardo Memento Zero, which we can see now. When the two pens are next to each other, you see definite similarities in terms of shape and proportions and all of that sort of stuff. These are both pens inspired by a generation of Italian fountain pens, uh, and of course the Leonardo having direct lineage there. But the Enso, for me, it's got those peak finials and that general shape that uh, we are quite familiar with. The other feature, of course, is this Greek key band. Now, when I say band, it is not a real band. It's just like grooved out of the uh, titanium. This is a titanium bodied pen. Uh, and those that Greek key also appears on the end of the section there. So, which in my opinion is a big nod to Omas, uh, who used that similar sort of feature a lot in their pen design. So as I said, peaked finials, which are nice. The body swells out slightly to this sort of, uh, you know, engraved or cut out band on the edge of the cap. The cap unscrews in one and a half turns. Uh, and then the barrel of the pen tapers down to another groove. And then, as I said, the final peaked finial. The clip is cut into the cap and it's quite rigid. It's going to hold your pen on a pen case, stuff like that, on a shirt, but you will need something of reasonable sort of strength to actually get it over that. 
The grip section starts with a little step down, very minor, onto some nice sort of blocky threads, and then a taper down to that Greek key, and then you're left with a Bock nib there. I've heard this nib referred to both as a number six and a number five. In my measurement, it looks like a number six. Um, I haven't replaced a nib on this. I haven't tried other nibs in it. But basically, because uh, I'd like to review the nib that comes on it, but uh, it is a Bock nib, so if you are wanting to expand your nib horizons on this pen, it is possible. The pen comes in either fine or medium, and this is the fine. As I said, it is a titanium body, uh, and it is grade 5 titanium, if that means anything to you. The pen is a cartridge converter pen and comes with a Schmidt converter. Uh, as you can see, mine's starting to get a little bit low on ink now. Um, and then you've got good solid metal threads to uh, you know, close down that barrel. A couple of really interesting things about this pen. Firstly, th this pen is described by the company by the company as minimalist. I'm not entirely sure about that. I think that it's actually much more a much more traditional fountain pen in everything except for the material and how the material is treated. Yeah, that's the other thing that I want to talk about, is that this may look like a shiny metal pen, but actually it has micro grooves over the entire body of the pen and the section, which gives it a really interesting grip and feel. You're not actually at all feeling like the grip is slippery or anything like that. So those miniature grooves, which you cannot see to the eye. Close-ups on some other videos and things of this pen show them. They are not as pronounced as like the grooves, for instance, on the grip section of the Twisby ALR. Um, this is still very smooth and shiny, but because those little miniature grooves are there, it is not a slippery grip, which is really nice in my opinion. One of the things that I actually really like about this pen is the branding on the pen. Now, I've shown you a lot of this pen, and if you have seen branding that I haven't brought up yet, please tell me where it is, because the only branding I can find on this pen is there. And so, written there, under the barrel of the pen, just really, really minimal branding, and I think a really nice, simple feature of this pen. Let's talk the price now. This pen retails on the Enso website for about 129 US dollars. For a titanium pen with a Bock nib and a Schmidt converter, I think that's actually a pretty good deal. There are certainly pens that cost a lot more uh, that come with a lot less. Um, that price is roughly, like in Australian money, about $170, um, which puts it in a really interesting price point. And one that I think actually is 100% appropriate for this pen. Let's do a size comparison now, just a very simple one here, alongside the Lamy Safari. So you can see that it is ever so slightly, like a millimeter shorter than a Lamy Safari when it is capped. When it is uncapped, you can see it once again comes in shorter, um, but it's not a small pen. You can see when it's posted, it catches up a little bit. It's still a little bit shorter, um, but there's a couple of things about this pen that actually I think make it a really good size in the hand. Firstly, I write with this pen unposted. It does post, it posts relatively securely, like it's not gonna come off. I just think that the weight and the balance of the pen is actually better when it is unposted. That's my personal taste. I think it's long enough. It's, it's not a huge pen, but I think it's long enough and there's nothing there to really like get in the way. It also means that the balance is nice and down on the front end of the pen. But what makes this a good size for me is the size of the nib and the length of the section. The length of the section I find to be really quite comfortable. You don't have to hold it back on the threads, although they are not at all sharp because they're quite blocky. You can hold it back on the section 
and you have a really good distance between the edge of the uh, nib and the page. If you hold it down, because of that slightly longer nib, uh, particularly say than like Alami, uh, you do have a really comfortable distance from the page. The specs of this pen are posted, it's 139.5 millimeters. Unposted, it's 25.5, 125.5, sorry. So a fairly usable length. And posted is 159, um, as I said, which is a good length, comfortable length. And the, the cap sits in a nice part of your hand. But for me, it just puts a little bit of weight back on the back of the pen. The grip section measures around 12.5 around here, which makes it a very comfortable pen to hold. Now, the weight of the pen is 45 grams. Now, apparently, originally, there was a brass version of this, and I can only imagine how heavy the brass version would have been. 45 grams for the titanium version. There's a lot of metal in this pen. 30 grams of that is in the body of the pen. So 30 grams is a good weight pen. It's almost the weight of, you know, a couple of sort of standard acrylic fountain pens just in the body of this one. The balance of the pen does go lead down towards the nib, as I said. So it's a really comfortable pen to write with. The cap weighs 15 grams, and a lot of the weight of the cap is in the, I can't quite demonstrate this, but like, you know, like the balance point of the cap is way up towards the top of the cap. There's a lot of metal in this top section. Um, it, so when you post it, you get that weight really on the back of the pen. Time for a writing sample now with the Enso Italia. Had the cap off for a bit. And so Italia, this is the titanium body. As I said, this is a limited edition of 200 pieces. The nib in this is a Bock steel fine nib. And the ink, once again in this pen, is Waterman Serenity Blue. Let's just do a, another bit of writing for you. So, a little bit of feedback, not a lot, just a little bit, enough to feel your writing on the page, but it is smooth, I think, it's pretty wet. Waterman Serenity Blue is not the wettest ink on the market, but you're getting a nice amount of it down on the page with this pen. It is a rigid nib. I, 100%, a rigid nib, not a flex. Uh, reverse writing is possible. It does dry out after a while. It's a little bit sharp, but it is possible if that's what you're into. Fast writing, I've had absolutely no problem with this pen in terms of hard starts. Like that one up there at the top, was only because uh, the pen had been uncapped while I've been filming this review. Absolutely no issues, hard starts, no, you know, feed issues, no flow issues whatsoever, just absolutely, you know, beautiful to write with uh, on the page. Um, even writing under its own weight, like can take a little bit to sort of get going, but you are, you know, you are more than capable of writing with very, very little pressure on the page. This is one review where I'm not going to take price as a pro or a con or even discuss it here because um, I think it's a pretty average priced pen for what you're getting. I think it's pretty well bang on the money. Uh, titanium body, good nib, you know, all that sort of stuff. So let's talk about the actual pros and cons. Cons, well, first one I have to say are some of the noises the pen makes. Like those little squeaks, they can be quite grating. Um, and they happen in a number of ways with this pen. Um, like it's just a noisy pen, but you it is metal on metal 
metal on metal, you are going to get some noises, and especially when that metal is textured like that. Um, one pro with this texture, though, is, that, is also that you don't get fingerprints as pronounced on this pen, but that's for later. Two other issues. Um, the threads get caught occasionally, they like they cross thread or something, um, but it's easy enough to fix and it's only a, a minor issue. The other issue I had, uh, which I actually I think I brought up in the unboxing, is that the Greek key around the top of the section there and those little grooves on the section, when you dip the pen in a bottle of ink to fill it, ink gets caught in all the little, you know, um, nooks and crannies of that. So you do need to go like get a little wet cloth or something and just sort of dab that down and dry it off uh, just to get the ink out of all of that so it doesn't end up on your fingers and in the cap and all the rest of it. But in terms of cons, that's it. The pros, once again, that texture, the fact that it means that you don't have a slippery grip section. It means you don't pick up heaps of fingerprints, all of those sorts of things. It's got, because of that, that it looks like a shiny metal pen at first glance but when you look at it there's something unique about it and it sort of has an interesting it's not mirrored it's just sort of like reflective I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever but it does to me the weight of the pen I think is great it's got a really great weight in the hand when you're writing heavy ish not super heavy but heavy enough to feel like it's in your hand but the weight is all leading down to the nib so your writing experience is very very much relaxed there's no sort of like, it's not like you're lugging a big pen around the page like with some big heavy brass pens. The size of the pen I think is also excellent. It's got a good sort of width, good grip, you know, width grip section, nice enough length in the hand. I think, uh, and as I mentioned, that sort of distance from the grip to the edge of the page I think is nice. And then finally, the nib is smooth and wet and it's generous and it's consistent and, you know, simple plastic feeds and all those sorts of things, but just super, super well uh, designed and made and does the job and that's what we want we want pens that write and this definitely does write this pen is robust and strong enough and heavy enough to be an EDC pen if that's what you want maybe not a tactical pen although those peaked finials could do a bit of damage to a you know a window if your car is submerged in water or whatever the case may be these are all things you can you know look at look at this pen and take things away from it um, but for me, what got me really excited about this pen is how it writes, how it feels when I'm writing in my hand. I think it's really unique. I think it's beautiful. I think the design is really cool. Um, I like the Greek key around the band there. I like the general shape. As I said, I'm a big fan of the Memento Zero uh, from uh, Leonardo. Um, and I think it has, has a lot of similarities in terms of the basic you know, design of the pen. This just in that beautiful titanium with a nice nib and all of that makes this a really really nice pen a really good pen and a pen that surprised me and I'm excited really excited to keep using so thank you for watching my review of the Enso Italia fountain pen I hope you found it interesting and useful if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, just like Enso did here, and I'm incredible, incredibly grateful that they did, um, I would love to hear from you. So once again, a big thank you to Enso. Thank you, my supporters and my uh, you know audience, for watching and supporting my channel. Enjoy your writing, and I will talk to you soon.